All right, here we are. We are um, actually live. It's been quite uh, a time getting things set up here. I've reorganized my setup a little bit, um, trying to get my microphone a little bit farther away from my refrigerator because my refrigerator motor is really loud. And um, yeah, I'm trying to uh, get a little bit farther away. I don't know if this is going to make any difference in my sound quality or not, but I hope it does. Um, anyway, my computer is now over here. It used to be over there. And my prep service is now over there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Where am I? It used to be over here. So everything's going to feel backwards to me today. Hey, drink more arsenic. It is nice to see you. Um, hopefully I'll be able to reach my computer um, while I'm doing this a little bit better too. So, um, I'm feeling really scattered today. I've got a gazillion balls in the air and I'm afraid this is going to be more chatter than um, uh, cooking or coffee content, but we'll have a little bit of it in there, I promise. <laughs> so yeah, I love your little, uh, your wave there, drink more arsenic. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, no, 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 cool. <laughs> I don't believe that Drink More Arsenic is a streamer, is that correct? Um, not with, with, is, is that Robbie? Am I, am I getting that, um, correct? Oh, interesting. He is not, that's what I thought. Okay. okay. Joy was going to give him a shout out. Well, I, just, <laughs> I know, it's hard to keep track of who's who. Yep, that's Robbie. Cool. Okay. So, um, we're actually going to make quiche today because I have a lot of eggs that I need to use up and uh, that's just what we're going to have for dinner tonight. So, uh, we'll just hang out and talk, chit chat while I'm making quiche. Something that I had to tell my kids recently that they didn't... Um, realize and maybe maybe this is news to somebody else but when you are making your pie crusts um, if you're making single crust pies uh, a double crust recipe is not what you want for your two pie shells um, because if you think about it the bottom crust that goes into the pie plate has to be much larger than the crust that goes on the top so the measurements for a double crust pie make a large pie crust and a smaller pie crust to make one double crust pie. However, if you want to make two or maybe three single crust pies, you need enough pie dough for three of the larger portions or two or, you know, however many. I'm going to be making three. So, um, we just, we really love quiche, and uh, I had just have discovered that anything less than three quiches is not enough. <laughs> nope. <clears throat> so, drink more arsenic, you're just helping Dana for now. If you were going to start your own Twitch channel, Robbie, what would you uh, stream about? I'm curious. I'm looking for my pie crust recipe here. I have got so much going on right now, it's not even funny. Um, we are involved with our local youth orchestra, <laughs> and we have our concert tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, I, I, even though I really didn't have time, I haven't had enough time to practice, um, I did make some time carved some time out today and I practiced so that we'll be ready for our concert. I'll be ready for our concert. So you would do games or completely wheels off cooking stream? What do you mean by that? <laughs> oh, I just leaned on my timer. Cancel. Okay. Um, yeah. What games um, do you play? I know that a lot of the streamers here in the food and drink category also do gaming and I don't really I play a couple games on my phone but they're not like not the sort For of thing me. you stream I mean you you don't really play Minecraft I don't play Minecraft I mean I have Minecraft I don't really I play, play it more than you. so 
Yeah. The kids play Minecraft on my computer. Yeah. Uh, I, I get... Here we all have it on our computers. <laughs> I get dizzy <laughs> when I when I play Minecraft. It just it messes with my head and I it makes me feel sick, so I can't play Minecraft. So I use your account when I play with your mom. So let's see. You would it, Dana, you're saying that Robbie would order pizza? <laughs> That's funny. Um yeah. <laughs> I would I would watch a stream of um, some some awesome grilling outdoors. That'd be cool. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, we've got um, we got our our orchestra concert coming up tomorrow. Um, our concert last year was canceled because of COVID. And the one before. And the one before. Yeah. So it's been two years since our kids have had a concert. Um, so we are really, really, really excited about being able to do our, our concert, uh, tomorrow. Some of the people in class have never even done a concert. Wow, because, yeah. And they're already able to hire classes. Yep, we've got kids. Our, our youth orchestra is, um, stru structured in, you know, different levels. So we go from the pre-beginning kids, they're like five or six years old, all the way up through, you know, beginning, intermediate, advanced. And um, we have some kids who are in the intermediate level who haven't even um, played a concert yet. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be really great. It's, it's taking a huge chunk out of our week to get everything ready for it, but it's going to be definitely worth it. Yep. So, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and poor Joy <laughs> has been sick, and she still doesn't have a voice. So she is going to be doing our coffee drink today. Mm -hmm. yes. um, after I get the quiche in the oven. And if you can't understand her, I will translate. <laughs> translate, no. <laughs> yep, I will be between, I between Joy and the microphone, I think. Um, hold on a second, let me check my my notes. I, may, I tried to make some notes for today. I did. I did, yeah. So, um, yeah, I got all, all kinds of stuff to talk about. Um, I started a new YouTube channel this morning. Actually, it's not a new channel. It's um, it's a Google account that I have had for a long time, but I just was not utilizing it. So I um, set it up to do some videos of um, the computer editing and the software that I use and the things that I do to keep our church live stream running. So that's gonna be like behind the scenes, like technical stuff. Um, but it is the thing that I do the most consistently when it comes to video. So I thought I should um, probably set up a channel so that I can um, teach people what I do, how to do the way things the way that I do them. And I also want to be able to use the content there to put together some training videos for my team at church. So um, that is super exciting, but it's like, you know, one more thing on my plate. I've been trying to work on writing out a, um, like a, a visual training, or not training guide, but like a, a quick reference for the um, volunteers in my video booth at church. Um, with pictures of like, I've got two different video cameras that we use and they're the same brand, but they're different models. And so things are almost the same, but not exactly. So I've got like photos of this is camera one, this is camera two, everything very clearly labeled. Like this is where you plug in the power cord on camera one and this is where you plug it in on camera two. So that is something that I have in the works. And um, I know you guys are not interested in any of that. But <laughs> I'm a potato. Okay. Thank Not you, Joy. Potato. You're a potato. Oh, Somebody's potato. a potato. All right. So let's start. Um, let's start making some pie crust. I don't think well, my face doesn't fit in the. I'm gonna stick my behind the break. potato. Well, let's we'll see. <laughs> potato. There, oh, potato. Okay. All right. That was fun. So for a single crust pie, <laughs> 
my recipe calls for one and a quarter cups of flour, and since I'm making three, I need three and three quarter cups of flour. Yes, you do. Yes, I do. So never fear, boy, boy is here. <laughs> ah, with a hat that doesn't fit. <laughs> three quarter cups. Okay, I need my um my bowl from the bottom. What was that? I picked up the hat. <laughs> oh, the hat was filled with Nerf darts. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to my world. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to get things ready to go. <laughs> Are you kidding? Of course. Yeah. Our house is filled with Nerf darts, violins, guitars, and Legos. That's just the way it is. And a few Nerf guns, too, but mostly Nerf bolts. Right? So, a couple of years ago, the kids Smart. pooled their money and. Ooh, that's, that's a good idea. Um, the kids pooled their money and ordered a was it a thousand? Mm -hmm. A package of a thousand Nerf darts off of Amazon. It wasn't that much yes. money. It was surprisingly cheap for Nerf darts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But a pretty good deal. I had a thousand nice plus all the ones that we had before. The camera over there. <laughs> Say hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm wearing a hat full of Nerf darts. Yes. I was just mm -hmm. wearing it and I picked it up and it split. Oh, that's why it wasn't coming down on your head. It's full of Nerf darts. Yeah. We were just talking about that. Yeah. Okay. We might have some stashed in secret places too. <laughs> the kids, I, I when they have. I don't have a bright green bag of Nerf darts. Right. With two Nerf guns. Hidden in a closet. Totally not. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, the kids have had cut friends come over just for Nerf wars <laughs> and <laughs> hidden stashes of Nerf darts out in the trees. Yep. So no, I'm gonna we've never done that, actually. Okay. We've never done that. I did no, never, ever. Have, I've done that. Yes, you have. No, I, no, I, I have. When? I've done that. You had James come over and you guys played Nerf War out no, in the trees. We actually, that was no, we actually Oh, that was Airsoft. I'm airsoft. sorry. I'm getting, getting my war methods. <laughs> I don't play Airsoft usually and uh, James likes Airsoft better yeah. than Nerf because it's more realistic. But honestly, yeah. I just like Nerf because it's fun. It's cheap. I, I told him he dropped yeah, it in a hat of Nerf tracks on the he, floor. He, he needs... He, he wants realistic, not and not exactly fun. He wants realistic. Now if we could only figure out how to stream a Nerf War, we'd be set for for Twitch, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That would be fun. So, tripling my recipe for my single crust pie crust. Uh, the recipe calls for a third of a cup. I'm making three, so I need a full cup of shortening. Sorry, that Jesse. is convenient. Okay, I'm gonna heat up my oven now. Okay. To 450 degrees so that I can pre-bake these crusts. GoPros! That's how you stream a Nerf War. Okay, um, hmm. How would you connect all of those? I, would it be live or would you have to just record it and then um, stream it as a simulated live? That depends. You could potentially I mean, how would you send all of those camera signals into your computer? Do GoPros do NDI connections? NDI. Yeah. Google it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how much range you would have. I'm thinking you'd have to pre-record it and edit it Maybe. into a video and then play it during your live stream. Oh. Oh. Yeah, my capture card will only do one camera. Um, so the way I have things set up right now, I can do my one video camera and the um, webcam that's built into my laptop. Um, but beyond that, I have to have a wireless connection. Um, and I do have that set up with my phone which I forgot to actually start before we started the, the stream. So if we want to use my phone as another camera, I'm going to have to take a minute and get that connected. Anyway, um, I got a cup of shortening here. And I am going to... Yeah, I am going to want my, um, my phone camera set up. <laughs>
That was fun. Now my dry ingredients are all fluffed up. And I'm going to put my shortening in here. Second, but I found it. Here we go. Spatula back out here and fluff it up and see if there are any big chunks. I think that looks pretty good. I really have been super impressed with this Bosch Universal Mixer. I've had it for a long time. I've had it for at least 10 years. And um, the kids have been a little rough on it, but it still still works. So, you know. That means a lot in my book. Okay, so the recipe says three to four tablespoons of cold water, and I'm tripling that, so about three quarters of a cup of cold water. And if I were trying to really impress people, I would have uh, measured my three quarters of a cup of cold water and then dumped a couple ice cubes in it and stuck it in the fridge. However, I'm not going to that much trouble today. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay. Get back to my other view. All right, now I'm going to move this over to the uh, the new prep surface. All right, so I'm going to need to divide this up into three reasonably close to even balls of pie dough. Can you guys see me on the main camera if I'm over here? Mm, not Barely, really. not really? Yeah. Okay. Um, would you mind turning it a little for me? Um, if you loosen up the knob that is on the left, yeah, then you can turn it better. Is that better? That looks better. And we're going to squish this together. These are going to be, I feel like this dough could be a little bit wetter. It's pretty crumbly. If I can make it stick together, it'll be really nice. So there's one ball. So I already told you guys I'm making quiche for dinner tonight. What are you all making for dinner? No, oh, you know what? I think some of this is so dry, it's really going to need a little more, a little more liquid. So I think I'm going to toss just a little more water into it. But I will get, yeah, that needs a little, a little more water. So just drizzle a little bit in there and toss it around. So they're eating leftovers. You're eating leftovers? What kind of leftovers? Okay, I think that um, this third ball of dough is quite a bit larger than these other ones. Does that look more even? And I forgot to get my rolling pin out. That's going to be a problem. All right, so when you all make your own quiches, you should remember to get your rolling pin out and your pie plates before your hands get all yucky. Now somebody, I read somewhere one time that when you're rolling out pie, pie dough, you should make it into like a, like a hat shape like this, and put some flour on it, and then start rolling it like that, which flattens out that center part. I don't know if that makes any difference or not, but I always do it. 
you guys have some secrets for rolling out pie crust that I don't know? I'll just try and do it, well, when I'm feeling patient, I try and do it gently <laughs> and evenly. I'm not always so patient when it comes to my pie crust. So I'm just trying to roll it out and then um, if you can lift it up and get some more flour underneath it before you're all done rolling it. Because if you wait until it's totally done and it's beautiful and you're ready to lift it and then you realize Oh shoot, it's stuck all over the place. That's really, um, really frustrating. This allows you to turn it as you work and get it rolled out more evenly. Because I am very right handed and my right hand pushes on the right side of that rolling pin a whole lot better than my left hand does on the left side of the rolling pin. Now, am I too far away from the microphone for you guys to hear me well? That's the next question. Next thing I'm going to do is just carefully pick this up and put it on my rolling pin. And then I'm going to roll it gently, put my pie plate in place, and then I'm going to unroll this pie crust right over the top of that pie plate. And hopefully I got it centered-ish, shift it a little. I'm going to ease it into my pie dish, pie plate, like this. And when it comes to quiche, I'm usually not super fussy. Um, I just kind of take the edge of my crust and roll it under. Like, I'm not even going to trim it. I'm just going to roll it under and turn the pie plate as I go. This is a quick and dirty way of getting your rustic pie crust put together. It's not really pretty, but it gets the job done. And for people who really like their pie crust, this is like heaven because you get such a thick pie crust along the edge. Um, I don't understand people who don't eat their pie crusts. I know they're out there. How do you guys feel about pie crust? Are you pie crust eaters or pie crust tossers? I am definitely a pie crust eater. I love pie crust. Oh yeah. Especially if it's like if you have, pie. If you like have extra pie crust and you just roll it out and put cinnamon and sugar. Finger and ladies. <laughs> we call them finger ladies. I've always known them as finger ladies. Yes, because my father-in-law would do that. He, would, he really taught me more about making pies than anyone else in my life. He makes really good. He makes very good pies. He makes apple pies mostly. And when my older kids were little, he would take that extra pie dough and roll it up with cinnamon sugar and bake it next to the pie and called it Lady Fingers. But my daughter Kristen couldn't remember exactly what that what he was saying, but she 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 tried, you know, and it came out finger ladies instead of lady fingers. So we've always called them finger ladies. So here we go. We got 
a respectable looking high crust there for the quiche. And I'm going to grab a fork and we're going to poke some holes in it so it doesn't shrink. And my oven is not quite preheated yet, so I'm going to set this aside and I'll do the same thing two more times. Two more crusts. So this crust is coming out more rustic than the first one did. <laughs> yeah, the first one was pretty good. This one's pretty rustic. Um, I hope you love it. Maybe I'll put, I'll make this one with spam. Ooh. And this kitchen says thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the link, Dana. I will look at it later. Um, yeah, I was going to make a bacon quiche. Ooh, more like Ooh. a quiche Lorraine. But all of my bacon is in the freezer, and um, I had a package of Spam in the fridge that was open because Noelle made herself breakfast with it the other day and did not use an entire can of Spam just for herself, which is probably wise. Um, so anyway, we're going to pinch this a little bit just to hold it together a little better. spot here that's kind of um, kind of weak on crust. So if there's anybody who doesn't want pie crust, they can have that one. That piece right there. All right. Get my fork. Poke those holes in it. Oh, that one got big. One more time. One more crust to go. Did you miss me? <coughs> I know. 
the oven's telling you to shut the door. Okay, set our timer for 10 minutes. Okay, now we're gonna start prepping the actual quiche filling. Ooh, egg roots. Yeah, but we're gonna start with chicken. Oh. The things eggs that go in besides chicken. the eggs. In my pan, I have two um, boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and I am going to, and some water. I've got water in here. Gonna um, let them cook with some, <laughs> something garlicky. Okay, so we are going super easy today because it's feeling very much like a Monday. Um, and I am going to do things as easily, as simply as possible. So, I'm going to use this Johnny's Garlic Spread and seasoning. And I'm just going to sprinkle that all over my chicken. This stuff makes really great um, garlic toast. Also works well on your chicken breasts. It's salty, it's garlicky. What else does it have in it? Parmesan cheese, parsley, spices, whatever. Um, I don't know, it just makes nice, yummy, garlicky chicken. Oh, good grief. Um, yeah. I would um, tell you some of the words that my other spam filter um, for the church <laughs> has flagged, but um, yeah, it's I don't like to have my mind in the gutter there. <laughs> but some things you wouldn't think of, like I totally was not thinking with my mind in the gutter uh, until that stupid spam filter flagged something. And then I had to think about it, like, how in the world? And then it's like the light bulb. Oh, right? <laughs> Didn't think about it that way. Um, yes, I do have some very, very um, strict spam filters. <laughs> you were telling a story about a family saying? <laughs> oh, I would love to hear it. Um, Hmm. I don't know if there's any way you could rephrase it with, and still have it funny. Uh, what else do we have going on right now? Um, I have, I think, nine, nine batches of coffee that I need to roast to ship out um, that didn't get done this morning. Because you were trying to get ready for this? Yep, I was, I was trying to get things ready for the live stream. And I was trying to make some plans for future live streams. I have some really cool stuff in the works. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to all of it. Um, planning is fun. And seeing things actually come to fruition is really awesome. So I'm looking forward to what I have coming up for you guys. <laughs> um, tomorrow's our concert. And that we're going to be in, dre not dress rehearsal, but stage rehearsal. Um, we're going to be performing at our local community college in their auditorium and that's not where we normally have class. So we'll be up on the stage practicing with all the little kids getting on and into your seats and getting off and switching classes and um, it's going to take most of the day. I think we have to be there at four o'clock and our concert starts at seven. Okay, I'm just turning this chicken and my timer's beeping at me. Turn the timer off. All right, we have three pre-baked pie crusts, and to take them out and set up a cooling rack. So I'm just cutting up this chicken into smaller, like bite-sized pieces, so that it will cook faster, and we can put it in our pre-baked pie crusts. And pretty soon, Joy's gonna come make us a, what are we calling it, a blended coffee? 
a coffee smoothie. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I've been on this super hyper focus on improving my espresso shots lately. And um, Joy's coffee drink does require, what, four shots of espresso? Is that what we said? Yes. Yeah. Four, four, one. So, um, you know, when you when you load it up with sugar and chocolate and, and all these goodies, um, you kind of lose the espresso flavor. But, and so, like, I feel like maybe a, um, an espresso shot that's not exactly perfect, like the way you'd want to drink it, is okay, because it's going to be covered up with um, all of these other ingredients. But... I'd really, really love to learn how to make a really awesome espresso shot that you could just drink all on its own without having to hide it underneath a bunch of half and half or something. But the, but the other stuff that you put in it is really good. The other stuff does make it really good. Makes I mean, good. there is nothing wrong with chocolate and caramel and, you know, Secret milk. Secret ingredients. Secret ingredients. But we're gonna, let, we're gonna let these guys in on the secret. Shucks. Yep. This is almost done. And what I'm going to do while this is almost... Yeah, it's warm in here. As this is almost done, actually I'm going to turn my oven down a little bit. It doesn't need to stay up at 450. We want to turn it down to about 375 to bake our quiche. Um, so while this is finishing up, I am going to... Oh, I said I was going to start with the Spam, didn't I? Spam. Yeah, make a Spam. I was going to do the Spam first. <laughs> so spinach. anyway, I've got some spinach, and I am just going to kind of coarsely chop the spinach, and I will throw it in with the chicken and let it steam a little bit, and that will um, give it a much nicer texture in the quiche. Mm, spinach. So I think I'm going to do two two chicken and spinach quiches and then the other one's just going to be spam and like I said it was it was originally going to be um, bacon but my bacon is frozen so I'm just going to kind of roll this roll this up and Keep my fingers out of the way. So if you roll it up kind of tightly, it uh, makes it a whole lot easier to chicken. your spinach to be like raw in with your eggs because even though you're baking it with the eggs um, it just it comes out dry I don't know if any anyone out there has ever tried to make a spinach quiche without pre-cooking the spinach first it's just icky it, the texture is not right like fresh fresh raw spinach is really good in a salad uh, it is really not good in your quiche. That is nearly there. Doesn't take long to wilt spinach. So I'm just going to cook that until the liquid is gone. And then we'll put the uh, chicken and spinach in two of the pie crusts. 
and then we will heat up the spam and chop it up. I could chop that before or while this is finishing. So we have we have most of a can of spam here. This is a lower sodium version of the Spam. It's not the traditional super salty one. Um, but if I were making it with bacon, it would be salty too. So probably don't have to add extra salt. No, I'm not going to add extra salt with this Spam. I will add salt and pepper with the chicken. Um, but I also cooked the chicken with that Lowry's um, oh. garlic. Mmm, that's all good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know how you guys feel about spam. I know spam is a controversial topic. You don't want it in your inbox. But we kind of like spam. We really, really love Hawaiian masubis. The spam. Um, And my chicken is done, so I'm going to lift this chicken up, put it in. I'm just going to kind of spread it out in this pie crust. About half and half. Half in that one, half in the other one. Yes? Oh. Spam, not salt. What? I don't hate it, but I also don't love it. <laughs> well, you can certainly do spam uh, in ways that are better <laughs> than others. <laughs> yeah. The first time I experienced spam, uh, I was actually at my pastor's house, and I don't remember why, but I was hanging out there, and um, his wife was making like fried spam for dinner and I don't know, potatoes or something and a veggie. Um, and and uh, I didn't particularly like just a, just a fried piece of Spam. Like that wasn't, that wasn't great. Um, but then a friend of mine who was Hawaiian showed me how to make musubis. Mm. And oh my goodness, the world of Spam became okay again. All right, so I just put a little bit of oil in my pan and I'm gonna throw the Spam in here. And I will toss this around until it gets a little bit, a little bit crispy, you know, but not hard. You don't wanna cook it to death. You don't want to cook it. I don't know. You just want to like toast the edges. All right. So I've got it basically coated with the oil, and I'm going to let it sit here and toast. Dana, one of your mods lives in Hawaii. Soak the spam in water for a few minutes before cooking it. Okay. Um, so I'm guessing you would cut it, slice it, dice it, whatever you're going to do with it, and then soak it, because if you just soak the block of Spam, it probably wouldn't have much effect on the center of the block, you know what I mean? I would think you'd have to, um, slice it at least first. Okay, this is browning up all right. So yeah, I have family in Hawaii. Um, my aunt's husband grew up there, and all of my cousins, of course, grew up there. Um, because I'm obviously not of Hawaiian descent. 
Um, but I do have family over there, and so I've been over a number of times, and there are some things about Hawaii that I really, really love. One of them is Mr. Beast. <laughs> I love Hawaiian pizza. Hawaiian pizza. I don't think that's actually Hawaiian. I don't think it's actually Hawaiian, <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> it's yummy. Yeah. Pineapple, Canadian bacon. Mm hmm Yummy. The one thing that, the one food that I always think of when I think of Hawaii is mangoes. Ooh. Fresh mangoes, like straight off the tree. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Mangoes are good. Coconut is good. Aunt no, no. Debbie has this huge mango tree in her yard, and it's just, it's so tall. It's the biggest tree ever, and it has mangoes on it. Oh, and the, um, the cedar tree, the other half, mm -hmm. is it taller than that one? It might be about the same height as that cedar tree. Pretty tall. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so this pan is getting a little crispy. I'm going to take the spam and put it in the pie plate over here. And I'm thinking this is more spam than I needed for one quiche. So maybe, oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe I won't use all of that. That was a lot. Because otherwise, you're right, Dana, it would be like a salt pie. Warm water, you soaked it whole. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I might have to play around with that because even this low lower sodium spam is pretty darn salty. Should we do some sun dried tomatoes in one of these? Is that a yes? Sure. Yes? You should put one of the only things that are sun dried tomatoes. Okay. I'll put sun dried tomatoes in one of the chicken dishes. Okay. So we're just going to. Sprinkle some grated cheese on this until it looks good. Uh, measuring with the heart, right? That, yeah. That's what we call that. Mm -hmm. We'll go to the overhead view again. You guys can see how I measure from the heart when it comes to cheese and my quiche. <laughs> pre-grated cheese from the grocery store. Because it's easy. Because it's easy. It's Monday. You do have filter and you could grate cheese I have cheese so for much you. to do. I know, you guys could grate cheese for me, but if I've already got grated cheese in the house, you know, it's easier. We're going to mix our cheeses a little. We like a cheesy quiche. Okay, sun-dried tomatoes. I almost forgot. We were just talking about them, and I was just not paying attention to what I was saying. We could put jalapenos in the salsa. We could quiche. put jalapenos in the quiche if you really wanted to. Okay, so here we go with the sun-dried tomatoes. These are marinated in olive oil and Italian spices. toss those a little bit so that they're not just sitting on top of the cheese. There, that looks good. Okay. I gotta wash the grease off my hands. This olive oil. Good for your skin, but I don't want it all over my kitchen. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is whip up a whole lot of eggs, and I'm going to use my Bosch mixer for that again. Um, yeah, that's what's that's what's next. Gotta rinse out the mixer. Okay, um, I'm going to whip up some eggs. It's going to take about 10 eggs per quiche, so I 
like I said, it's I have a lot of eggs I need to use up, and that's what I'm going to do. We're going to break some eggs. A lot of eggs. And I'm just going to throw them all in here and whip them up with a little half and half. We're going to measure some half and half with our hearts again. <laughs> Hi. The only thing I don't love about my Bosch mixer is trying to pour liquidy things out of it. Why did you mix it? Because it's quicker. Because it was 30 oh, eggs. And it's 30 eggs. I didn't want to miss, miss an egg, you know what I mean? Have you ever made quiche and had the, you know, you're pouring the eggy stuff and you find a whole egg yolk that hasn't even been broken up? <laughs> no, it's not really. Okay. You want to switch me to the overhead view? Oh, the overhead view. The screen capture, yep. Yeah. Wow. Thirty eggs is a lot. Thirty eggs mm -hmm. is a lot to whip by hand. That's why we used the Bosch today. Three quarters next to the S. Hey, I used to say that a lot. You don't think I can? It's well, no, I wasn't talking to you. Oh, you okay. looked right at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna put a little salt and pepper on the um, the chicken ones. You've never used 30 eggs. <laughs> 30 is a lot. It, it is a lot. Eggs. Yes. Where did my salt and pepper go? Here's the pepper. Have you ever had to make it for like 11 people though? We really, really love quiche. And yes. we love leftover quiche in the morning for breakfast. Yeah. Um, so I make enough for dinner tonight and breakfast tomorrow. Dinner tonight, breakfast, and lunch for our dad. Because he takes it for lunch. For lunch. Has lunch. He doesn't so. know. Okay, that's the spam one. I don't want to add salt to that one. No, you can salt. Put salt on these ones. Spam? Hmm? Spam? Yeah. I'm questioning the spam one. Okay. Don't eat. I think it's going to be fine. We like spam. We like spam. Do you want right. to put some furikake on it? Mm -hmm. And do it sort of Hawaiian ish? That'd be interesting. That would be interesting. We could sprinkle a little of that just. Or would you put it on after it's done? Oh yeah, that would probably work. That'd be that might be better because then you wouldn't burn the sesame seeds. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Or like so right when, when it's like just about done, so mm -hmm. they get like the tiny bit toasted, but toast not like toast. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what I'm talking Fresh about. I don't know. Bye. Okay, so I wonder if I should use the convection fan. I bet I should. Okay, so I'm, am I doing a half batch or a half batch? I don't know. Do you have enough uh, ice for? I have enough ice for a half batch. I think it's enough for a full batch. I just want to be a slushy. I'm going to set my timer for 40 minutes and we will we'll check it. We can make a full batch, but it would just be more of a drink and less of like a slushy slushiness. Yeah. Well, you were. Also, ice cream would help. Maybe. It would make it thicker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah use the so, Joy has been working on developing this ice cream. Recipe. Yeah, we're not going to use the sherbet. No, we're not using rainbow sherbet. Sherbet. Sherbet? Sherbet. Sherbet. 100% sherbet. <laughs> okay. Do you say sherbet or sherbet? Sherbet. <laughs> sherbet. Sherbet. It's sherbet. sherbet. It's sherbet. There's only one R in the word sherbet. I know, but I've always said sherbet. <laughs> I've always said it incorrectly. Yeah, and I'm going to keep saying it incorrectly. Sherbert. Sherbet. Sherbert. Dana, you and I are going yes. to disagree. Sherbert. <laughs> <laughs> it's sherbet. <laughs> Okay, do you need the half and half, Joy? It's sherbet. Yes. I've always said it is sherbet. Unless I was a little kid. Right? I got a little, little kid. But it's sherbet. Okay. 
this stuff. Okay, you're going to need me to make you some espresso. Yes, I am. Okay. You should just learn how to make espresso, Joy. Well, I want to. So yeah, well, I'm, I'm working on, on the uh, espresso technique. When I have the espresso technique really fine-tuned, then I will teach you guys how to make espresso. I don't want to teach you something wrong. Uh, not because it's like wrong, but because I want I want our espresso to be excellent. And just I, uh, like the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I've been I've been talking with some people about espresso. Talking to people. Well, talking to people. We're so my oldest daughter and my daughter in law both worked for a major coffee chain that you're probably familiar with. Um, and so I thought, who better to ask about espresso than a barista who makes espresso every single day, all day, every day. Um, so I asked my daughter-in-law what she knew about espresso. And she said, well, uh, I know you put the coffee in the top of the machine and you push the button. <laughs> And I was like, well, do you know anything about, um, about like the grind size or anything? She goes, nope. Uh, we just put the, put the coffee in the top and push the button. And so she was like, well, you should ask Kristen. Kristen is my, my oldest daughter um, because she spent more time at it. And Kristen actually was managing one of these stores. Um, and so she had additional training that my daughter-in-law probably didn't get. Um, and so I asked her and she was like, well, there's a difference between like a single shot and a double shot and a long shot and a ristretto. And um, she said, but really you just push the button on the machine. <laughs> and so I asked her, do you even know like how much coffee went into the portafilter? And she's like, nope, you just push the button. So uh, I struck out, darn it. I was trying to get like some insider information and it didn't work. <laughs> so Dana says whether there's a letter or not is import is not important. Yeah, yes. especially down south, right? Yes, it's Sherbert. It's Sherbert. <laughs> Sherbert. <laughs> I agree with Dana. Ha -ha. We're, we're never going to we're never going to agree. Tony. <laughs> it's Sherbert. Okay. It's Sherbert. Okay. So, um, my coffee, my espresso technique has been improving lately. I have discovered that um, I don't particularly love a really, really um, high. What do I want to say? Um, I don't. I don't want a really, really strong, like a high extraction coffee. I like my espresso to be a little bit more mellow. So I am going to use about. Let me think about 14 grams for a double shot. So I'm going to do two 14 gram double shots for Joy's drink. Um, and I am going to use, which one am I going to use? I think I'm going to use a Colombian Cafe Femenino. And um, there is a cool, cool story behind the Cafe Femenino coffee that you can read about on my website. I think I have a link to Cafe Femenino's website. Um, they do some amazing work in their local coffee growing communities. Um, they have training programs for kids um, to learn how to do like construction. They teach them construction skills um, so they can get out and get better jobs. They do have schools for the kids um, and they even have a program for um, uh, updating kitchen equipment for the families, um, the families who are working on the coffee farms, they're um, replacing their traditional ovens that really filled their whole house with smoke with modern ovens that don't create all this smoke. And they're actually seeing the incidence of heart disease going down in those communities. So um, I really, really think that supporting the Cafe Feminino brand is a, is a good thing. So. If you are interested, there is more information on my website, bravewoodbeanery.com. Check out the Columbia Cafe Feminino. That's what we're going to be using in the drink today. Great.
Okay, so those of you with earbuds in, you might want to turn your volume down for a few minutes because uh, we're going to make some noise. The espresso machine is noisy. The, um, the Vitamix is super noisy. Um, yeah, the grinder is noisy. It's going to be noisy in here for a minute. Okay, let me weigh out some coffee. And if you, if you would like to work right here, you'll be right in front of the camera. Oh, oh wow. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. Okay. What do what, what, what I need to put in? Okay. So I have roughly a cup of half and half. I can actually kind of talk. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I have roughly a cup of half and half that I'm pouring in. Oh, whoops. That's a little more. Okay. <clears throat> a little more than a cup. It was an accident. A quarter of a cup of caramel syrup. It's a lot of caramel. But just, just trust me. And uh, a quarter of a cup of hot cocoa mix. And three tablespoons chocolate syrup. Ooh, I need a spoon. I need a spoon! Um, Another? Put a spoon over there. Can you join? The other thing you could use is, um... Oh yes, it's this thing. <laughs> yeah. So... Oh, this stuff is so good. It reminds me of something from Dutch Bros, but better coffee. Um... the coffee. The ice comes in last. Okay. The ice goes in last because I don't want it to melt. Don't want it to melt ice maybe. cream? Ice cream. Ice cream is going to come in also later because I don't want it to melt. Okay. That's, that's the thing. Now we need the espresso. This one done? I like that. It's a double shot. That is done. I need to do one more. Kind of sour stuff. One double shot of espresso. And then our second sh shot of double shot of espresso. In there. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <clears throat> so, next we need. Okay. Next, I'm actually going to blend it a little bit. I'm going to blend it for like a second or two seconds before we put the ice in so the ice doesn't take that long to blend. If you had coffee right now, you'd be up until 6 a.m. and then the dog would wake you up at 6.30. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sensitive to caffeine also, um, and it is a little bit late for us to be having uh, coffee. Joy's natural on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What was I doing? Yes. Okay. I was blending this for a second. It's about to get loud, folks. Very loud. I'm going to mute us. Wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> that really wasn't as bad as the coffee grinder. No. Yeah. Okay, next. Next, we hope we have enough ice. I feel like I'm missing something here. Did you go through your list? Yeah. You got your syrup. Oh. You got your cocoa powder. Yep. Did you have any milk or half and half? Or I put half and half in first. Half and half in first. And ice cubes. And then ice cream. And, and coffee. Yes, coffee. Oh no, it's stuck to the bowl. Oh no. The ice is stuck to the bowl. No! It's stuck! Careful. Yeah, like one. it worked. I put all the ice in a bowl beforehand because I took it out of the ice cube tray, but now it's stuck. Maybe if you put some water in it. Yeah. <laughs> no! It's gonna get warm! Yeah. <laughs> Did you think 
about having to uh, do um, a video. Ah! Don't break my bowl. I won't. Probably. <laughs> if I break it, I'm sorry. Oh, yoink. Ooh. There you go. We're getting it. <laughs> Ooh, there's one. It's like popcorn. It's so cold. Ow. Okay, there we go. All right. Yay. And having a, a Vitamix blender makes this a lot easier. My hands. Okay, where did I put my giant spoon? There it is, right there. And then we're going to put approximately some. <laughs> She's measuring with her heart. <laughs> <laughs> the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay, she did it. <laughs> yep, got it. <laughs> Let's see, do we need a little bit more? <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. I'm gonna put the ice cream back in the freezer. Okay. Did you unmute the microphone? This, this, this is a. It's, it's. My hand is in the middle. It's so good. Can I have? It's the delicious. Now? Yes. Okay. It uh, looks good. It's so good. Okay, it's melting. Cups. Ooh, there they are. And this. Yeah, I was I was about to say something and then it just my brain stopped. What do you think, Robbie? She, did she do okay? Is it good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I think it tastes pretty fantabulous. So okay, well, I will wait until you have these all portioned out and then we'll do the whipped cream. <clears throat> yeah. Let's hope we have enough for the last two. So this cream whipper is my new favorite toy. <laughs> I love it so much. You just put the cream and some powdered sugar and some vanilla in here, shake it up, charge it with a nitrous oxide capsule, and it comes out whipped cream. Is that one a little bit short? Yeah, that's a little short. Extra cream? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> well, the ice cream got put back in the freezer. I'll get it out. Mm -hmm. You ready for the whipped cream? Mm-hmm. All right. Oop. Oh, oop. <laughs> the one that I tried to hold up the camera. Yeah. Come on. Be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> this one's pretty. That one's pretty. Look at that. Oh, I love these. Okay, and we got our okay. fancy straws, too. I, I think straws. we're getting to the end of the whipped cream here. This is left over from Elena's birthday. We have these fancy bamboo straws. Oh, they'll be perfect. Mm -hmm. I think that is it. That's all the whipped cream. Okay. Look. Aha! Da da da! Coffee. This is my blended coffee. Somebody go get Justin and Noel. Justin, Noel. Dessert ah. before dinner. Oh, absolutely. I think we need it today. Today has been such a Monday. Wait, I just have this many things on my list of things to do. I'm going to take a picture of it. <sighs> yeah. Picture. Okay. Do you guys get to take a picture? Gorgeous. Yeah, you, want, you want a... Uh, whatever the heck you call these. Yes, whatever. Which I, I swear out of this one, right? Yes. Oh, wait a minute. What about which one? Me, um, which one? Put some sapples on it. Yeah. We also have uh, a <coughs> tiny Hershey's peanut butter cups. Or peanut butter cups. Yeah, these are easy though. Actually, that's good. You're going to have to take another picture. Yes. <laughs> you don't want to see it. Wrong yeah. lid. Wrong hole in the lid. More leftovers for my birthday. Birthday leftovers. Okay, now, they have, now it has sprinkles on it. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, you want sprinkles? I love coffee. Somebody needs to take some to the well. <laughs> Sprinkles. Sprinkles make everything better. Okay. okay. Take one to the well. I'll eat this stray sprinkle. <laughs> mm. Okay. So we still have 16 minutes on the quiches that are in the oven. 
<laughs> yeah, like we did not forget the sprinkles. I've gotten faster doing mm -hmm. it. I can have it in like five minutes. Oh, wow. Is it good? That is yummy. Uh -huh. That's good. I'm going to be up all night roasting coffee now. Yes. This tastes like issue. the birthday Dutch Bros yesterday that better But Marie better. But better, yeah. yeah. I tasted the Dutch Bros and it was like, it was good. Because Dutch you know, Bros is coffee. good. You know, it's Except mostly it wasn't, sugar. It wasn't blended. It had whole ice cubes in it. Yeah, it wasn't blended. Oh, it was just an iced coffee. Mm -hmm. But it tasted similar. It but similar it tasted to similar to this. Mm -hmm. yep. But oh, then yeah. it wasn't as good of coffee, obviously. Yeah, yeah even though I haven't really fine-tuned my, um, my espresso shots completely, um, they're getting better. Yep. And they're definitely good enough to make a blended coffee. Oh. So what I've discovered... Coffee that I and orange juice at the same time. <laughs> What I've discovered about espresso, um, not from my bar barista children, is that um, yeah. you have to have the grind right. If your grind is too coarse, it's just going to come out sour and gross and under extracted. So I'm working on getting my grind just right, and um, yeah, and my dosage, and you know the amount of water going through the machine. There are a lot of variables to espresso. Coffee and um, orange juice don't taste very good together. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, one minute, one minute left on my timer. We'll see if this this quiche is done. I'm not really hopeful. Um, my temperature, the oven temperature, is just at 349 degrees now. I don't know what was going on with my oven, but it was not not working properly. The one on the bottom is getting close. The ones on the top are not, which seems backwards. It's not what I would have expected. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I think I'm going to sign off here and um, I'll post pictures of the quiches on my Instagram when they finally get done. So if you want to see how it looked at the end, um, check out Bravewood Beanery on Instagram. Check out my website um, for more information about that Colombian coffee. It is really, really um, a neat organization to be um, doing business with. So, yes, I will definitely post photos. Um, thank you, Dana and Robbie, for being here. And anyone else who was lurking, I do appreciate knowing that you guys are out there uh, listening to me babble and <laughs> make quiche. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I'm running out of things to babble about, and I have no idea how long it's going to take for this quiche to get done. So, um, yes, I will post pictures on Instagram and on my uh, Discord server, so you can check me out on Discord, Bravewood Beanery, also over there. Thank you, have a wonderful evening, you guys, and I will see you next week for Caffeinated Mondays. Bye.